All right, here's the backstory. In September 2016, I had a date arranged with a shipper to pick up both the 53 Studebaker and the 51 Mercury. That video is up online, and I think it is like, whatever, 51 Mercury, 53 Studebaker shipping or something like that. I'll put the link in the in the in the down below. So anyway, two days prior to that shipping arrangement, of course, we weren't sure that this thing was going to go down the way it was supposed to, uh, because there'd been lots of uh, failed schedules up to that point. But we thought we had two days to get the Merc to a point where it was going to run okay. We we quickly got it running all right, but it, we could not start the motherfucker from inside the car. We had to press this little button on top of the ignition solenoid to make shit happen, and it was kind of um, it was kind of like the frequency was getting cut, if you will. Like it would turn the engine over, but it would do so in increments and not smoothly. So it would like be that 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 that. You can almost hear this solenoid going that 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 that. So it was only sending power intermittently, uh, not just intermittently. It was it was steady. But it was not smooth enough to run the engine. By pressing this button, of course, we can, with with our own finger energy, with our own muscle power, we can hold this solenoid closed. So essentially, the battery was not able to hold a six volt solenoid closed to the point of being able to start the engine. That was the that was the assessment. I bought another ignition solenoid from, I uh, can't remember now. Might have been CarQuest. Anyway, stamped on it, not just on a sticker, but stamped on it was 6 volt, right? We put that one in, exactly the same thing. Whenever we pressed the ignition button inside the car, it would be stuttering, da -da 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 -da, and, and not spinning the engine fast enough to make it to make it fire. But we could go under the hood, press that button, and start it would so I was like well that's fucked uh, after a few iterations and whatnot we decided well you know it was a three or four year old battery in there maybe it's uh, showing the right voltage but you know it doesn't have the oomph and maybe it's you know maybe it's lacking in, in its load ability right don't know if we had a load tester or not but I suspect not but anyway we thought maybe she just won't hold a load. Um, no, I was at the battery before. I said, okay, I'll go get a brand new 6-volt battery. We'll charge the shit out of it. And, uh, you know, if, if, if there is a weakness in the battery or maybe one of the cells is just plain, it's it's load weak, you know, then uh, maybe that'll solve it. It did not. On all three of the starters that we were working with, by pressing the ignition key inside the car, all we would get is an, uh, you know, a, a regular but, but truncated uh, spin sequence, and so obviously the, the uh, solenoid was not being held closed by the six volts available to it. We screwed around on that for a long time. Uh, Wayne finally went and got like a, you know, even a half dead uh, quad battery or or motor or a motorcycle or, or snowmobile battery, but 12 volt, and it. it it would start immediately. It would, it would hold the solenoid closed. So what we ended up doing for that whole process, the whole day troubleshooting, was just put that same quad battery or snowmobile battery inside the cab. And we wired it up to the, to the ignition switch and wired a wire over to the uh, solenoid. And we had our thing. That situation is still the same in the Merc right now. Except that I've replaced the 12-volt battery because finally it... It was just totally toast, and I can't charge it anymore. And it doesn't; it, it won't charge up to the point where it'll even run this fucking thing. So therefore, we're back to square one. I'm trying to get the cars ready for things that I know to have them uh, registered and insured in British Columbia. And this is one of the things on my list. I mean, I'm sure maybe you can get by with having two, like a, a an accessory battery or something like that. But I don't think they're going to dig it to be in the cab and uh, whatever. But I'd rather not have the situation if I don't need to. It's unneeded complexity. So, 
behold, six volts all night. And uh, we're going to find out. Uh, like I say, the conclusion is not perfect. And I'll show you why. There's a loss here that I'm not sure if maybe is a part of the whole process. Maybe there's something I don't understand. Over here is the old battery from the Merc. Now, this is not a perfect one. This only has uh, 6.12, 6.12 volts in it. A really good 6-volt battery would probably be more like 6.5 to start. So I'm not saying it's a good one. Uh, and it might be affecting the test here a little bit, but... Um, I just I wanted to see whether this battery would activate the solenoid at all to the point where it might work in the car. We'll find out at the car, that'll be part two or part three or whatever. We'll get to the car thing. So all I have rigged up right here now is new solenoid, the main terminal going to negative because the Merc is positive ground. That's a whole other thing that always blows my mind for such a simple little 180 degree switch it, it it blows my mind and it's grounded to the positive of the battery and the ground is the main body of the um, solenoid right there isn't a separate ground switch so there we have the uh, multimeter volts DC we're testing the main output shorting these two out is the same as turning a key in a car and or pressing the start switch or whatever the hell you want. Uh, I guess turning the key kind of like enables the signal to go to these two and then it it, uh, it goes. So if we watch the multimeter there and I press down on the thing, press down on this. So with my muscles, there you go, 6.143. Um, cool, right? I've also got the... Um, this is kind of the little uh, start box that I built for the Dodge truck, right? This is what I'm always starting the Dodge truck with. And uh, it's got an extra set of wires on it for a run-stop switch and all that sort of stuff. But I've only ever used it for the momentary switch. But now I've got that switch shorting out the two things it needs to. Mind you, I started out shorting out the uh, this little post and the what would normally be the positive. Because of the negative ground thing, I had to reverse it. So, like... It, <laughs> I hate that shit, right? So right here, let me press the switch now and have a look at what it says on the uh, on the multimeter there. I heard the switch go down, but look at how much loss there is across there. And also you can see the button go down when I hit it too. But see, 595 rather than 6.15 or 6.14 or whatever. Now, I don't know, that doesn't sound like a lot of loss. But, um, you know, maybe this is still going to be an issue when I put it in the goddamn work, right? I don't know. Maybe they build these things with such shitty tolerances now that they can't... I mean, it's really just a contact switch. It should be basically putting out... When I tested this battery with this multimeter without all this shit, it was the same 6.15. So how come I'm getting that much... You know. But anyway... I don't have the answer to that till we put this in the car and we can see. If I start getting that kind of bullshit, I'm going to freak out. Um, and I may have to come up with something else entirely. But uh, anyway, the long story short is, you know, here's the mock-up of the wiring for a new 6-volt ignition solenoid for the 51 Mercury. Uh, just to see whether, you know, I mean, this battery is definitely holding that button down. But it was it was also holding it down before, but it, we were getting like really sketchy power through it. So we'll have to see. I don't really like that voltage drop, and you know maybe I've got enough wire here that that's just what happens. But it's holding the button down, and it seems to be holding it down about as tight as I can hold it by hand. So anyway, I'm gonna call that positive for now. We're gonna you know. If we get to putting it in the car and then things are all weird again, uh, you know, maybe I'll stick with the two battery situation for now. But I think for the uh, inspection, I don't really want to explain to them what the second battery was for. Um, and it's it's unnecessary. I don't I don't want unnecessary complication in a car like that. It's already simple, and let's keep it simple. Anyway, all right, that's too much talking for me. This is crazy. 
Um, I just wanted to show you this. I'll probably edit this down to something that's semi-understandable. And um, we will get together for section two, which will be this solenoid going into the mercury. And we will surely see uh, whether it's the solution to the problem of the whole second battery, second 12 volt battery thing. All right. Thank you very much for watching and uh, we will talk soon. Thanks. Bye.